you need to hit rock bottom, hit it hard. Mm. Yeah. But don't just love have yourself just hovering above rock bottom for a while. Mm. You know? Make sure something happens that makes you really want to better yourself and go, this isn't working out for me. If there was youngsters who wanted to chat and they were like, right, I'm ready, it's like, right, start mm. practicing yoga, mm. start doing breath work, start listening to talks, start reading the correct books. Mm. You know what I mean? There's all the resources that you need to be a better version of yourself are out there. Actually, if you was really good, you don't need any of them because they're all already inside you. Hey, welcome back to Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan Podcast. Today we have Liam Brown. Liam transforms people's lives through his natural uplifting healing abilities, life experience and wisdom. He does this in a variety of ways, focusing on propelling people towards self-realization and enlightenment uh, via the yogic path and Christ consciousness energy. So they can live a life of harmony and bliss. He is a cacao ceremony facilitator yoga teacher, owner of Full Power Cacao, founder of Stone Cold Sober Events, cold water therapist, spiritual coach, motivational speaker, sound healing facilitator, and self-published author of his classic spiritual um, quest novel, Dealer to Healer. Now, there is so much more to this guy. Let's bring him on. Hey, Liam, how are you doing? Hi, darling. Yeah, very good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. So you uh, you recently moved to Wales. Uh, how's how's that going? We're in the transition of moving. We're not fully moved yet. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a big project. There's a massive amount of land. Yeah. That's all ours up there. And then we've got something else going that way, that way. Amazing. Uh, we've got our own river, which is pretty epic. Which is where we're doing our meditations every morning. And yeah, just developing developing the space into a beautiful kind of like spiritual hub and home which is oh, going to be the dr- it's been a dream for a very long time that's amazing i mean living in like in land and in, in, in with nature and doing the spiritual work and you have your family there as well so what more do you want <laughs> what more do yeah, you want well, all of what is for, to get it to get it how i want but it's a process and you enjoy the journey the graft mm-hmm. and the hard work and the you know the little bits of struggle but it's uh yeah it's it, it's really enjoyable mm. and uh it, i'd rather be digging and clearing spaces and creating things than sat on my laptop doing my other work which uh i find difficult no, the admin work <laughs> i know we all do <laughs> yeah. we all do but, we all do yeah um, so I'm just thinking back when we first met, we met through my good friend Haley. Um, and then uh, I ended up in your aesthetic dances, ended up in your cacao, one of your cacao ceremonies. Um, and then we were just like, we used to during pandemic, that's when our whole kind of just like tribe just kind of just got together and we used to go on hikes and we used to do lots of things like beach days, drumming on beach and woods. It was such a beautiful time. And um you know and then I was really intrigued by your story I didn't know your story to full extent I know you have your book out um it's a dealer to healer and um so I really wanted to know more about your story and what you've learned from your life so far so let's start off with a bit about yourself so can you tell us who you are what do you do I am Liam Brown I um have a company called Full Power Cacao, um, where we sell the world's finest ceremonial grade cacao all over the world. Uh, that's growing. I launched that in twenty end of twenty twenty one. I've been working with cacao for ten over ten years now, um, really intensely as a plant medicine um, in ceremony, how it heals people. So yeah, so I've set that up. I've obviously been doing the cacao ceremonies. That's what I'm kind of renowned for now. Mm. In the UK, um, I've been doing them yeah for, for eleven years. 
um, and they've just grown and expanded. And now we have the cacao facilitator training. We've got loads of offshoots from from what I've been doing and um, just trying to build up the full power cacao brand more and more so that that allows me a little bit more freedom that I don't always have to be at things and things can operate without me. And, you know, by training people, it gives them an opportunity to then train others and just mm. just starting this real big, beautiful web of uh, heart-centered, um, because cacao is all about the heart heart-centered um, facilitators and people who want to also support other people on their healing journeys and their awakenings or whatever it may be to become the better version of themselves. Um, I also have Stone Cold Sober, um, which is an events company. We put on yoga retreats and um, we do the Stone Cold Sober Festival every year for the summer solstice. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what I do. Um, this year's festival is going to be phenomenal. We've got amazing people at it. Um, and then, yeah, then just creating this kind of like uh, place now with this land where we can put on our um, kind of smaller events, but then also have like, because uh, the, the mission is to create vegan off-grid yogic communities. Mm. And um, this is going to be kind of like the pilot um, not that it's going to be a community, but it will be a community in terms of we'll do events here. We'll quite a lot of our people will come and come and stay here and be here. There'll be a lot of uh, people coming and going during the creation of the space mm. um, to bring it just to bring it back into what it should be a magical space. It's been overgrown. It's been left. It's been dilapidated. So mm. um, that's 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 the long term mission is to create those things via via what we do and via cacao becoming cacao taking over from coffee in the next 10 years and uh, to be at the the kind of pinnacle and the leader in that industry and in that movement um just will then allow us to create these off-grid vegan yogic communities which are going to support a lot of a lot of people um and show other people an alternative way to live which is a and a fun way to live do you know what i mean it's not like it's going to be some boring cult where we just sit and read read text and scripture all day we might do a bit of that but then we might go and have a rave afterwards in the woods or you know do some singing and some dancing and uh, what we're naturally supposed to do you know I mean we naturally think that most people think you have to get pissed to, to go and dance and it's like no no you don't you can dance as much as you want and actually dancing without the without the need for drinking alcohol empowers you a lot more mm -hmm. um gives you more freedom and obviously allows you to wake up the next day feeling great rather than dreadful mm -hmm. which is always a positive in my eyes yeah I guess it kind of just goes back to your self-confidence as well because like I know I met people who are um who just can't go to a party without a drink in their hand they just wait for the drink to kick in for them to just let loose and 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 channel that energy it isn't that energy either they're like they're not fully aware of their surroundings either because you get tipsy and then you don't know what you're doing whereas yeah. i've been to your aesthetic dances which is absolutely amazing the first one i went to was sober and i was like oh my god i found my tribe because i don't drink and and mm. i haven't uh, smoked in my entire life and I found my tribe where people are just high on energy. Like the, the you could go on for hours and hours and hours dancing, dancing, and there's like no drink in sight. Like which is incredible, you know. Um, and yes. I absolutely love, I love that you're bringing this, um, to the world. You know, sooner or later it will catch on and catch on and catch on. You know, so somebody has to start somewhere. Somebody, someone has to lay that foundation somewhere. And yeah, and there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people doing doing things and sober things and spiritual things and and mixing and mashing it up. And I think the thing that we just do what we do. Do you know what I mean? I'm not trying to copy anyone, emulate anybody. It's just creating what we're supposed to be here to create. Um, yeah, and just give you know give loads of people them opportunities to grow as a person rather than like oh. I can dance here, but I need to have a drink. And it's like, well, actually, that means you're not comfortable in your own skin. Um, you don't know who you are. You're not got. You're not got any confidence. And it's like, you know, you need this other this other thing to fuel you to be able to do those things. Where it's like, I can just crack out a dance at the bus stop if a tune comes on on my headphones. You know what I mean? It's like. Yeah. It's not my problem if someone else is uncomfortable with me having a little boogie. Yeah. Really. <laughs> I don't know the I'm enjoying stop. myself. Like, <laughs> if, I, if, if it upsets you that I'm enjoying myself, 
That's your problem. No. Yeah, well, that is that inner demon. It's like sometimes you're sometimes when you're doing something and they want to do do the same thing, but they don't have the courage to do it. They project yeah. that onto to others. Um, so it's not always been like this, right? You you're you're having this amazing life. You you're out there making a difference in terms of sober life and cacao and uh, all the wisdom that you've you know you have right now but it's not always been like that has it let's take you back to your childhood so what was your childhood like what was your upbringing your environment so firstly every all that happened in my life is the perfect training for what i'm doing mm. so everything was an apprenticeship um and everything that's happened i feel very very blessed for um, even though sometimes you look at it and go, oh, if that happened then, or if I had parents like this, or if I had these opportunities and it's like, I had, everything was perfect. I, you know, I excelled through what I had. Um, but yeah, it was growing up, you know, around a lot of domestic violence, no positive male role models, um, stepdad that I didn't like the typical stuff. I had a really, really loving mother. Um, but felt disconnected from family, didn't really know where my place was, always sort of felt like an outcast a little bit um, with things that I wanted to do. Was always in trouble uh, at school um, because I was just I was just angry, I think, you know, when you, you lose your dad, your mum and dad split up and you kind of not can't really get to grips with the fact that um, there was all this violence and that it wasn't a, a healthy place because, you or, you know, ultimately you want you want your dad. Um, and you want your family unit and you want, you know, your mum and dad to be together. Um, but, and then, you know, them being in a, with a single mum for quite a few years and then, then getting into another relationship that was not good in other ways. Um, and then just, just around a lot of, a lot of dysfunction and saw a lot of things that you shouldn't really be seeing mm. when you were a kid. Um, and then, yeah, it was just, just, just super angry, super aggressive. I used to get rid of a lot of that aggression playing football, um, kicking people. I loved kicking people. It was great. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like sent on to go because I didn't care. I wasn't scared. I was just like, go and, go and take the biggest person out. I wasn't bothered. Um, and there was just this pent up aggression and anger. And that kind of went into adulthood, really. And probably until I was about 28, 29. Mm -hmm. It's just inner, inner anger and frustration at the world for not being how it should be. Mm. And the world's totally perfect you know as it should be right in this second it's exactly as it should be doesn't mean it's perfect uh, mm -hmm. in terms of like how it's gonna be mm. but it's exactly as it should be now with the consciousness of humanity do you know what i mean and it's mm. the, the, what, the wherever the world looks to you it looks to you like that because you're tapping into that energy like the mm -hmm. world to me is magnificent and beautiful incredible divine um full of amazing opportunities and it's like if then i go and see something happening and then i tap into that energy that's really negative i can go and see something happen and i can go and assist or not assist or you know remove myself from it but then when it's affecting you is then when you take it home with you and you're still feeling that energy or you're still feeling some aggression or you're still feeling a vibration of the thing that happened it's like just shake it off mm -hmm. go back to your vibration because you're only ever in control of your own vibration mm -hmm. so yeah but this, all that knowledge didn't come to me until I was in my 30s. So it was kind of like having a spiritual awakening um, when I was, I think I was about 30, 31, mm -hmm. that kind mm -hmm. of Saturn Returns sort mm -hmm. of age. Um, but yeah, I went to uni in London, was 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 selling drugs, dealing drugs, was acting, Was I was modelling. When I was in London, I was a little shit. I was just like, just, uh, you know, was very arrogant and uh, cocky. But underneath that, there was a an air of not being very confident, but pretending to be confident all the mm. time. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Always thinking about what people thought of me, what I looked like, um, how I was, you know, not how I was behaving, but then sometimes I would look back afterwards and go, why did I do that? Why did I say that? Do you know what I mean? But pretending that I didn't care about anything when actually internally I did care about. But I think that's kind of like your sweaties, in it? You kind of feel angsty about everything. It's like, yeah. oh, how should I look? What should I wear? Yeah. Who should I be with? You know, yeah. and then your 30s are just like, you start finding who you are and then your 40s are just like, 
they've been epic so far, my boys. <laughs> I've only had two years of it, but well, well one they... and a bit years. Yeah, yeah. Well, you it's because you're 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 uh, you're really thriving. That's what somebody said to me. Um, and I thought, like, life starts at 13, you know, mate, life starts at 40. Really? <laughs> it's like, before then, you got to go through all of that <laughs> and yeah, go yeah, through yeah. all of that. And then you start laying that foundation at age of 14. Kind of just makes sense yeah. how you, you're you loving, uh, you know, age of 40 at the moment. Yeah, and um, that's, what I say to, that's what I say to people, like, people who are, like, jumping on the path and they're 26 and they go to me, oh, but you're so far ahead of me. And, you, you, you know, what you're doing is this and that. And I'm like, you're 26, yeah? You're turning up and listening to me. When at 26, I was in a club putting 10 ecstasy tablets in my throat, <laughs> giving zero cares about what anyone else thought and was just getting off my head all the time. So I said, you're very much advanced of me. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you look at it that way. Yeah. So I say, it's, like, it's not about looking at people and going, oh, I wish I was there, I wish I was there. It's like, you know, get people who come to my trainings who are 20 years older than me and I'm like, this person's coming up a training like to get knowledge from me <laughs> and that's just there's no age yeah. thing do you know what I mean it's like when it drops in when it doesn't drop in it, it's just all aligned for when it when it should happen so yeah it's just being, being happy with that and not and not chasing things just letting things happen over time like you know even even in my 30s I was like I've got all these skills and all these different things that I do like they didn't seem to come together I just had all these strings to my bow and I was like I do you know making music acting doing a bit of this, manual labour, tree surgery, painting and decorating, building work, building off-grid things, travelling, you know, becoming spiritual, becoming into yoga. And I was like, oh, they're just like all these things. And then, boom, they just all come together at one point. I was like, oh, right. It all makes yeah. it all makes sense now. And it's like, but when you're in that thing of going, oh, what do I do? What do I do with my life? Where should I go? Where should I turn? And you're like, silver your plath on the fig tree just... <laughs> Yeah. waiting for some all these opportunities but you can't choose one because mm. if you choose one it might rule out the other you yeah. know what i mean if you oh go fully God, into yeah. one thing it's like well what about that thing then? Yes. <laughs> and then expand. eventually you do nothing and then they just wither away and all fall and you've missed your life yeah. you know what i mean and it's yeah. like actually just start picking all the fig trees mm. and it, what's this is the saying isn't it what's meant for you won't pass you by or something like that so yeah. it's just like and that was the thing of just all sort of end of my 30s everything just kind of fell into place and um mm. i really actually started focusing on abundance mm. which i hadn't done and that mindset of abundance and financial security and because it was just something that wasn't and I, it it felt icky to me do you know what i mean mm. and now i realize it and it's they want you to make it feel icky to you because they don't want you to understand it yeah and once yeah. you understand it and get a grip of it you just alchemize whatever you want whatever mm. level of wealth and abundance you want like I was abundant in all other aspects of my life at that time mm. but I was just like I don't feel like a man that can support people mm. and if I want to be a leader and people are looking at me as a leader I've got to be effective in all aspects of my life not mm. just you know what I mean living yeah. on handouts or something and it was like boom let's let's focus on that now and focused on it and smashed it in 18 months yeah, or the, you kind of just remind me like um, I'm in my thirties, and it's like I, I'm I'm exactly at the same boat as you, where where you was like everything is there. How do I put it together into one? And I'm exactly in that stage, and probably around forty, I'll get it <laughs> in the next few years. Just keep doing everything. Just keep doing everything until something drops in. But like you know, what feels right, put it, put more energy energy mm. into that, and then just you know, my thirties, I was just getting by. Mm. you know mm. I was just getting by and it was 2019 the end of 2019 in Barcelona and I just run out I didn't have a penny to my name and I ended up eating at the Sikh temple mm. and I was like this is not where I want to be even though I was really you know I wanted to be in the Sikh temple I really enjoyed it but I was like I want to be able to support me myself mm. Mm. and actually I want to be able to go and have a meal with 20 of my friends and just get the bill Mm. I've never done that mm. and like last year I did that you know mm. what I mean it's like without it being anything without like a book I read it's like make sure every time you purchase something it's like buying chewing gum mm. and the first time I did the meal thing where I bought a meal for a lot of people it was like buying chewing gum mm. 
And that's when you attract abundance as well, right? That's how you attract abundance, where if you're in a place to give, you're filling your own cup up and you're in a place to give and it comes back to you double the amount because that's how universe works. Um, But sometimes times seven. Times seven, there you go. Let's I'm make seven. it 10, universe. <laughs> we'll bring on that abundance. And I think like when it gets to, you know, there's a lot of work that when you do on yourself and it gets to a point where you recognize that your self-care and saying no, setting those boundaries becomes important. And it also gets to a point where you're not, like you said, you're not afraid to say yes to abundance where most people are scared to say yes to abundance. But what happens is with the people who are scared, they label you selfish. They label you like, oh, you're selfish for wanting this, you know. But then once you're fit with them, it's like, no, I don't really want abundance. You're okay. Yeah. But that's not you, is it? Yeah. No, no. And, and and that's just that's just playing small and making excuses for not for not stepping up as a as a human being because there's enough abundance for everybody in the world to be mm. super super abundance it's just stepping into that energy the energy field of it and um and that thing about people thinking that you're selfish it's like if anyone ever thought i was selfish just come to one of my cacao ceremonies and then see how it affects me for two days that my energy is drained i just give everything i change mm. people's lives like you know there was ni- 98 people at the ceremony last saturday Oh, at Illuminate, um, no. I saw. Oh, at, it was... at the, well, at, yeah, at the lighthouse. Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. And because uh, we booked, we booked the venue, so it was a, it was a full power cacao ceremony. It was for our facilitators and the graduates, and it's like, you know, put that much energy into something like that, and mm-hmm. um, it, it, yeah, it drains you for a couple of days, and it's actually it's going that, and that's my service. That's mm. that's service as a as a teacher as a human being for empowering other human beings to to step into abundance to stop making excuses to become a better version of themselves to get out of their old story their old paradigm which is holding them back and uh, that's what i love saying it i say it in every one of my ceremonies pretty much now it's like just to let you all know you're all exactly where you should be right now mm. Mm. if that's gr- a great place amazing it can be more amazing if it's a really bad place and you're thinking well this happened and this happened no it was all through your choices that you're making your perception of that be the way it is now. Those things that happen could also empower you to be great. Mm. Yeah? Oh, so yeah. it's it's all a choice. But everybody is exactly where they should be in the world. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And you don't have to like it. Or yeah. you can like it. Yeah. And it's sometimes it gets into that mindset as well, like um, a fixer mindset as well. That's that's something that you, you, you got to deal with when you're on this journey as well. And any journey that oh my God, I have this, all this knowledge and I want to share it to you, but they're, they're not ready to receive it. They're not ready mm. to receive it. And then it's like, a, it causes a bit of a friction in terms of relationships as well. It causes a bit of a friction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, with, with relationships, uh, it's like, are you a vibrational match? Mm. No. Okay. So you're either going to have to drop your vibration or they're going to have to lift their vibration. Yeah. Oh, Do you really okay. want to drop your vibration? No. Do you really want to drop your vibration? Most people would say no, but most people will drop the vibration and they'll mm. start doing things possibly that aren't what they would want to be doing. Mm. Um, or is the other person going to increase their vibration? Sometimes they will increase their vibration. Yeah. Mm. And sometimes they won't. So the only option if is to either meet somewhere and mm. not be where you both should be or let go and keep your vibration where it is and let them and actually by doing that a, a lot of the time allows that person to raise start to raise their vibration and when you went about um was talking then about um you know um giving people wisdom or whatever it is and i just i just my point for people is be scared of anybody who's trying to help you be scared of anyone trying to help you wow okay yeah be scared Explain. of anyone who's trying to help you, yeah? Because if they're helping you, they're going to be restricting you from doing something that you should be able to do yourself, yeah? Oh, yes. Yeah. So they're doing the work find, for you. <laughs> yeah. So find people. So get rid of the word help. There's loads of people who work. I'm like, they want to help people. I'm like, it's the worst thing you can do. Mm. Worst thing you can do is help people. Support, inspire, empower. Support, inspire, empower. Oh, Support, empower, it. inspire, yeah? That's what you need to do. If you're helping somebody... 
It's like me helping one of the kids do something by doing the work for them. It's mm. not helping them. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Supporting, inspiring, empower is going, what, what about if you look at it like that? Or what if you carry that like that? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Not carrying it for them. And that's mm. what a lot of people in, in life do. And a lot of people actually, they want to do that. It's like, I'm going to help you because it makes me feel better about myself. I'm helping this person and I'm helping that person. And then they're sending a fucking video. Oh, sorry. They're sending a video of themselves like feeding the poor. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's so yeah. like, well, do you really need to do a video of that? <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. You know? Wow. So that ultimately just goes back to the, the journey that it's letting go of other people's journey that they can yeah. do it you can't parent yeah. them and sometimes are often a wound from your own um when you were looking for your caretakers and caregivers to give you that guidance but now you're just kind of just you're wounded with that but you, you're channeling out into the world but you're not yeah. looking at that wound with the with the parents um, yeah 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 yes. that's what a lot of people do is they want to help everyone else and not help themselves that's why my mum died my mum wasn't interested in sorting her stuff out mm. and her helping everybody else was like well I'm not busy helping everyone else I've not got time for me yeah and that's just an excuse do you know what I mean yeah. that's just yeah. a, a papering over and it's like the people that you're supporting the best thing you can do for them is be the best version of yourself mm. and if that means upsetting the apple cart and changing the way thing yeah but mum you've made my you've made three meals a night for the last six years so yeah. you need to do it. You need to carry on doing that. Mm -hmm. But are you ready to go? No, I'm not doing that anymore. This is what's going to happen. I'm, I, I'll cook one meal a day. If you want to eat it, you can. If you don't, cook for yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? If that's what if that's what she wants to do, or she can just go. I'm not cooking anymore. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I've had and enough. That's, and that's really going to upset everyone in the house yeah. because it's different. They're like, well, where's this come from? Do you know what I mean? It's like when people get into a relationship and um, like a lot of my mates used to do this when I was a kid and they'd be someone totally different for this new girl, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then you're like, why Why are you not yourself in front of her? Oh, but well, I'm, I, I am, I'm just, you know, I want everything to be good. And then two years down the road, I want to be myself again. And then the girl's <laughs> like, who, who are you? Who is, who's this? And she's like, nah, I'm not into this. <laughs> I'm not into this. And then the relationship ends. It's like, yeah. you know, from the start, yeah? Be exactly who you are from the start. And if they oh like it, God. great. If they don't, that's not. But you've just wasted two years of her life yeah. and your oh, life. Oh, my God. That is so freaking true. I was I was actually talking to my friend, Vic, yesterday. You know Vic, Vic, right? You, we, um, yeah. we used to hang out. All of us used to hang. And, um, yeah, so I saw her yesterday. And we were talking about exactly the same thing. It's like, why do people at first just like show the best version of themselves and they do the things that you want them to do and then like a year or two down the line they completely is like go back to their default and you're like I don't really whoa we're not even matching on the same vibration anymore it's like yeah. fake vibration it's oh my god you just said it perfectly <laughs> yeah I don't know why people do it it's, it's madness just be yourself just be yourself and if someone don't like that yeah. someone else will yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah, I do totally agree. It goes back to being real. Um, and that's another another word that people are afraid of, the world are afraid of. They're afraid to be real, to show their vulnerable selves, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. so um now let's talk about um obviously you mentioned like your your drinking and you took you took a lot of drugs. Where did that journey kind of start? Where and what is your feelings towards it now? Um, so, obviously, everything in the UK, we're a very uh, alcohol-centered culture, really. Mm. Everything, not probably not as much now, but when I was growing up, everything revolved around the pub. You drank, and uh, and then I drank, and then I, you know, wanted to try other things, and started smoking weed doing whatever whatever i could do i would i would try it you know because mm. i was i was uh, i was interested as well and what a lot of mainstream people will say to you is that once you start doing drugs it will lead to other drugs what mm. is the first drug that everybody in the uk does alcohol alcohol oh alcohol. yeah oh yeah, yeah i didn't think of that 
So it's alcohol. Alcohol is, a drug. alcohol is what if that is their if that is the concept, yeah. yeah. Alcohol mm. is the thing, the drug that because drugs are mind altering substance. Alcohol is a mind altering substance. It's a drug, yeah. Mm. Um, that's what leads to everything else. But then, like people like who are stuck in, you know, drinking's fine because it's legal, yeah. Mm. Um, da da da, like a proper conservative bloke. You can't do drugs. You shouldn't smoke weed. It, it ex- lead to ecstasy. It probably lead to harder things, and you'll end up being a heroin addict. So that doesn't happen, by the way. It, it kind of occasionally happen. Um, but what they're missing is that the thing that they're drinking and that they're accepting and that they're giving to the kids is the thing that opens you up to wanting to experience other altered states. Mm. And other altered states, altered states are fine. Yeah, everything's fine to try. It's when it becomes it when it becomes a problem. Um, but there was a, I wrote a poem actually. I was a, I think it was a bit of spoken word just about the um, about drugs and alcohol. And now in in 2010, the uh, the government um, funded a study called the Lancet Report, and it was by by this guy called Professor Nutt. And it was like right, we've social, economic, um, health wise, recategorize everything. Every mm. substance, yeah. Mm. So he did this and he recategorized everything. He put alcohol from a class, um, from Ill- from legal to like I think it was a B or A, but A maybe because of its um social um issues and mm. because of the amount of alcoholics we have and how it's long term health issues. Things like uh, cocaine, ecstasy were dropped to a B or a C. Weed was legalized. Uh, crack and heroin stayed as class A's. But the government were like, uh, no, mm. this this is not going to be good. Like, we're just going to scrap this report. Uh, mm. So they spent millions on it. And then by the guy who was the most renowned, uh, renowned professor in that field, and we're just basically like, no. So it was like, well, why did you spend that money on that report if you were not going to be open to the to the findings? And like magic mushrooms became almost almost legal. Like for me, it's like legalize it all. Let people do whatever they want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, if they want to be cracking heroin addicts, let them be cracking heroin addicts. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, you you should not be able to control what other adults put into their body. That is up to you. If you want mm-hmm. to put shit in it, put shit in it. If you want to put really good stuff into it, I'd recommend putting the good stuff in. But mm-hmm. you know, everyone's on a different path. Mm-hmm. Um, so the start, yeah, is, is alcohol, and I just grew up in this drinking lads culture, football banter, sexist, racist homophobic xenophobic <laughs> all the phobics mm. i was in that environment that's what mm. i grew up in so i was a consequence of that so i was a little bit of all them things when i was growing up because that's what i'd grew up in mm. and it's not uh, you know uh, and it's not until you start traveling and i was fortunate enough to be acting so i was meeting homosexuals i was meeting gays i was meet, you know and i was like oh they're all right i was meeting foreign people i was like oh they're all right like mm. and then you just start uncovering the lies that you've been taught by the culture that you've been brought up into mm. because everybody is a consequence of their of their culture and it's it's when do you break free of that and become the person that you're supposed to be and see outside of that really kind of restricted paradigm mm. Mm-hmm. so it's a, there's a, it's a saying that just comes to my mind somebody said I can't remember who it was to show me your environment and I'll tell you who you are and that's yeah. like it's, it's so important to align yourself with people who are either on a similar like a uh, high vibrational path or a, a growing a wanting to just grow in life you know and they see things from, from a perspective of growth because now what I was like you know before my awakening I was you know in a mindset very pop culture unconscious and I would just like bitch and gossip about anything and everything and that's like obviously it's, it feels like a bit of a now if I tap into it, it feels like a low vibration my energies drops really quickly mm. if I'm if I'm in that state or saying something or, or around people um and that quickly changed after my spiritual awakening where now you I would rather stay with people who are growing and talking about growth and how do they find solution to the problems how can you um you know we 
also hold space for other people to whatever they're going through but there's no longer a victim mentality in this you know where 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 I was before it's all victim the world's doing this to me um why don't you feel sorry for me oh I have a full-time job I have this I have so many things to do why don't you feel sorry for me whereas now it's like okay full-time job how can you find a solution how can you do this how can you do that you know and that's a growth mindset you know there's a place to hold space yeah I get it you can't leave your job or I get it that this um your family you, you know your family treated you bad or this 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 there's a place for that you hold space you give them love you give them um you know empathy but then also try and find solutions as well so they're not like dwelling on the victim mentality so like mm-hmm. victim consciousness do you feel that um when you were in you know obviously you know taking drugs and drinking and your your household were you in a lot of victim mentality yeah i I wanted to blame everyone except Mm. myself it's always pointing fingers at everything else and then Mm. once you start to kind of want to improve yourself a little bit or go in some self-inquiry for me it was the 12 steps of recovery Mm. Um, and it made me you know write an inventory and then realize what was the consistent factor of all the issues all the problems I had in my life all the issues I had with people what was the most consistent Mm. um, thing within that and it was me Mm. I was always there I was I'm always present in all these things all these lists of things I'm always present Mm. it's like oh I'm the problem Mm. everything is me yeah Yeah. so then when you then that drops in you go okay so how do I start to improve me how do I uh, take some responsibility you know the inventory is about taking responsibility for like for you being that person and then Mm. that victim mentality then when you become on a little bit further on your spiritual path it's like what am I doing to it if you're still attracting things that aren't uh high vibrational uh, that are like incidents it's like what am I doing to attract this Mm. and then you kind of start figuring that out and then now when you get even more heightened you go oh that's not bad what's that's just led to here or you know you're trying to figure it's like a jigsaw puzzle in a way you're like oh why why did that specific thing happen there or maybe we've just gone through this little difficult spell because something really good's coming Mm. so it's like just you know even like being ill or being sick it's like to give you strength for what's coming you, you when you're sick you're detoxifying you know that stuff's not that sickness has not brought that gunk into your body mm. your body's like getting rid of all that gunk that's in there all the stuff that you've breath- been breathing in over the last few months or whatever it is mm-hmm. so like for me there's no i always tell the story of the farmer and it's like fortunate or unfortunate it remains to be seen there's no there's no there's no bad and there's no good because something good that you feel good can lead to something that you feel bad and something mm. bad can be your biggest blessing in disguise do you know what i mean so yeah it's like amazing. loads of people i know it's like i had an act- car accident that woke me up i had a, a i had cancer that woke me up or this happened that woke me up or this horrific relationship or this person dying woke me up mm. and so allowed me to see the light so it's like so then when you go that it's like oh, well that's not a bad thing then yeah it's a it's positive a good... thing yeah yeah so everything's positive man yeah everything yeah. oh yeah and all, suffer- and all suffering is just illusion mm-hmm. yeah because yeah. it's Suffer- just your perception of it yeah I, th- I think it's like um I think suffering is the word that we we all like with some consciousness and I think it's like uh it's like what I say in my talks as well is the more you go through the darkest period of your life, the more growth there is. So you should celebrate it. Go celebrate Mm -hmm. it in your darkest time because that is a point where you will upgrade to another level. And that's what it is. We're here to evolve. We're you know, we're, we're not here to stay stuck, you know, and also we're also in the time we're like filming this, we're in an eclipse energy where it's so like, I can really see it where, whether you stay stuck the in the old you, or you move into a uh, birth into something new. So death and a rebirth, a lot of death and rebirth that's happening. Yeah. An eclipse season really does that. It intensifies to a point where you have no longer but to get up your ass and do something. Yeah. And it was Beltane yesterday. So the energies were super strong for that as well. Yeah. It's like, you know, the the first of May, the Beltane energies and bringing bringing all that in, the connection to nature, Mm. where you're going to 
play up to and evolve into and uh yeah just bringing all the beautiful beautiful energies in which is yeah. you know which is which is magnificent but yeah it's um it's ownership man just just own everything own that you're doing and take own, accountable own... action like accountability for your own actions as well you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly that's what, what i'm very 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 forceful with in the way that i teach mm. you know what i mean there's not many people that teach like me because they're scared of losing people yeah because i'm very like on it you know what i mean i don't yeah, very direct you're, you're like you, if you remind me of tony robbins and i like tony robbins approach to life as well it's like cut through you know there you go yeah, yeah, you know right. something yeah. you need to hear you need to take action on it yeah you, you know? can go to go to six months six years of counseling or just do it today mm, exactly one small step don't... leads to a bigger bigger step <laughs> exactly know? just make One's... a choice today to get out of your victimhood victim mentality whatever it is you know exactly people that people come to one cacao ceremony and they're like i'm a new person or people came to the festival last year and they're like i'm still buzzing from your fest i was like how can you still be buzzing it's just a pivotal moment in my life yeah. that's brought this energy and i'm still riding the wave of that energy and i'm like yeah wow yeah. i should have charged you at least 10 times more for that <laughs> that's pretty big <laughs> you know what I mean? if it was a business model you'd have to pay for the amount of upgrade you'd be like, oh, sorry that's three thousand energetically you owe us three thousand pound when that's converted into gd in great british pounds <laughs> no don't do that the rest of us actually hoping that we get like a bargain come on me <laughs> no nah, it's never going to be like that but do you know what i mean energetically that's what people talk about you know yeah. and i'm just like it's a, it is a bargain it is a bargain yeah. it's a yeah. total bargain yeah, um, especially the, the amount of stuff that's on at the festival i'm just like i'd like to go as a punter do you know yeah. what i mean i'm like that's <laughs> that's amazing and i've just got to be running around like a headless chicken oh my god yeah your energy is like so amazing because like when i was like helping you out um a while ago it was last year or year before that i can't remember and your energy is like bish 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 bosh bush and i'm like whoa Leo. <laughs> you're like doing this 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 like doing 10 things at once and you're doing it like just just, just done and i'm like whoa yeah. <laughs> i can't even like manage my little thing right now <laughs> <laughs> that's what that. pauline is like you're an alien she's like you're an alien she's like you have to be a bit yeah. Uh, like different because i i just think everyone can do that and i'm like they can't it's different energy do you know what i mean a lot of people are a bit more chilled and mm. i actually really that's my thing is always people say what do you need more of i was like i need to chill more mm. you know even when i took took ourselves to turkey at the end of last year and it was like we just chill i just mainly chilled for 10 days whereas i went there i was like right, i'm gonna go into gym every morning <laughs> I'm, gonna ceremony, I'm gonna play play football like i'm gonna do all the events oh, and then oh, i just got there and my body was like no no i, I, I all i did was played volleyball at four o'clock in the afternoon oh, for an I hour <laughs> well, and then one day i couldn't even do that i was like no <laughs> can't do it <laughs> I guess like it's a great combination with you and Pauline uh, that you know you're like J -j 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 -j, and she's like calm down. <laughs> yeah, I'm Bring like, you, like and grounded. I'm like, what have you done today? And she's like, I did four meditations. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love this combination with with you two. Um, so you talked about your spiritual awakening, right? That was your turning point. So how did that come about? Um. Well, it was, um, I kind of like had this environmental awakening. Um, I think I was, I'd been selling drugs at a festival in Spain and then me and my girlfriend like dry, drove around Europe hmm. with the, with the funds. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did that quite a few summers and I came across this exhibition by this guy called Janan's Butrand in Prague. And, um, it was just all about the earth and how people were messing it up and these beautiful pictures and then facts about like, the environment and it was very much climate change and i had like this mm. sustainability awakening climate change earth environment mm. awakening and mm. that was kind of the first one and then i kind of really got into that but i was kind of like one of the angry ones like why are you not doing this why are you not doing this mm. yeah. and that's the worst you can be in in anything yeah and uh and then my mum died that was a massive part and that got me thinking about oh is there something else where's my mum now if she she existed in that physical body, but I can still feel a presence. I can still feel an energy. And then that was really what got me started 
thinking and wanting to change my life. When she was alive and she lived in Gatley in Manchester, she couldn't really see what I was up to. And then I kind of felt this presence of being viewed, mm. which I had never felt before. So I was like, oh, right, I need to maybe sort myself out a little bit now, start doing better things. And then a couple of years after that, I just kind of fell into this massive depression because I'd stopped selling drugs, I'd stopped partying. Mm. Um, I was like, oh, I need to find things that used to make me happy. I need to start doing them again. I need to start selling drugs again. I need to go partying again. I need to have Mm. loads and loads of girls again. And at that point, I basically got caught with a lot of drugs on me. Oh, why? Really? Uh, was, was Did you end up in prison? To... Oh, I was, I was, I got found guilty. I had, it was a whole kind of, it was spread over a year from getting caught, from having my house raided, from mm. uh, wow. going to magistrates court, to going to court, to having a jury, getting found guilty by the jury, then going, and when I got found guilty by the jury, I'd always already moved out of my house, mm-hmm. give my stuff, put my stuff in storage, give my wallet <laughs> and my phone to my dad. Like, when I'm getting sentenced and my barrister's like, you're going to probably get found guilty and you're probably going to do a minimum of a year, probably three years. Mm -hmm. So I give, so you get, you get, um, you get found guilty. And then I'm like, right, I'm going to prison. They're like, no, no, you don't go to prison. now. you can go home. I was like, what? And they were like, no, you have to come back in a couple of weeks to get uh, next week to get sentenced. The judge sentences you on a separate occasion. (laughs) Right. So I was like, okay. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I thought I was going to prison tonight. And, uh, <laughs> so then I come back to get sentenced. The barrister's like, I was like, what am I looking at? She was like, oh, like the, the lightest it'll be is like a year. Um, the maximum we reckon probably free, but it could be really, really hard on you and give you, you know, the maximum sentence was like eight years or something. Mm. Um, and then that evening, I just shot a film that summer mm. um, and it was premiering at the London Film Festival that night of my sentencing. So wow. I'd only told a few people about the uh, about what had happened that I'd got caught because I was a bit embarrassed about it and I'd been doing it for years and I'd been in I'd had drugs I'd flown drugs I'd driven drugs all over the world and um, I just got caught in a pub near me mm. and my whole body just surrendered. Mm. Any other moment in that whole period of me being a drug dealer, I would have escaped. I would have got away mm. undoubtedly, but my body. You know, I just was like, done, stop. Mm. And that was the moment of the start of my spiritual awakening because mm. I then, once I got caught, I, they then made me start going to um, AA meetings, 12-step meetings, and that was the start of the process. I was going to counselling for drugs, but I wasn't a drug addict, mm. but I needed to create a case for when I went to court to support mm. me being a drug addict, which was my defence. Um. But actually going to those things changed my life, changed, you know, went, like doing inventory, doing the steps, realizing I was the problem, cognition, mm. reading more about Buddhism through my counseling. She was telling me to go and meditate, go to the Buddhist center, do mm. yoga. I didn't do yoga. Though. I was committed to not doing yoga. <laughs> I was like, I'll do yoga when I'm in India. That was my commitment. And um, but yeah, so then going back to when I got sentenced, go in the court and I'm like right give my phone and my wallet to my dad got rid of everything um said bye to my girlfriend because I didn't want her to come to the court and uh it was like three people that night who were coming to the premiere that thought I might not be there and loads of my other friends were coming and I was like it'd be quite funny that I'm not there you know what I mean yeah. and then it's like where's Liam oh he's, he's in prison, prison. <laughs> You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, right, wow. Um, and then any, we went to went to get sentenced. And the barrister is like, s- starts off dead dead good. No, it starts off dead bad. Then it goes dead good. And then it goes really, really bad. What You know, he, he like gives his kind of reading. Yeah. Oh, oh, God, like this is going to be awful. He's going to give me like the worst thing. And then he goes, uh, we really liked the letters that your friends sent in about your character. Um, and he went, so I'm going to give you 150 hours community service and no suspended sentence. That was like the lightest possible thing. Well, my barrister was like gobsmacked. She went, I can't actually believe that they've just give you that. That's ridiculous wow. because you just got found guilty of possession of a class A drug, of a lot 
of a class A drug. Yeah. Um, so How was many like, did you have? A thousand, only a, well, a thousand. Uh, only a thousand. <laughs> only a thousand. <laughs> only a thousand. But it's still a lot. Do you know what I mean? Oh. And, um, <clears throat> um, yeah. But that, uh, that surrender, that surrender, that moment yeah. was universe is saying, when you surrendered, I got you now. I got yeah, it. Yeah, totally. And I think I really, part of me really wanted to go to prison because I wanted to get away from the world. I wasn't happy. I was uncomfortable in my skin. I was depressed. I was suicidal. Mm. Um, I was not happy in my life at all. And that, But that was the start mm. of the process. And then I moved back to Manchester, um, started doing spiritual stuff. Um, my friend Catherine Henshaw, who's a right, really renowned psychic now, we kind of went on this spiritual um a journey together this spiritual awakening and then loads mm. of things fall into place i end up in guatemala for the end of the mayan calendar on a pilgrimage and that and then i meet the cacao shaman and then pretty much everything everything starts from there but people go mm. oh was that moment you met the cacao shaman pivotal was that like i was like no mm. i said looking back now it was pivotal but it wasn't like i met the cacao shaman and i was like this is what i'm doing i found what i'm doing mm. no not at all not at all i started sharing cacao it became part of me mm. it became part of what i did but it wasn't that i thought that was going to be my thing mm. and it took it was probably eight years after seven years after where it became oh this is my thing now this mm. is what i should be doing and then people would come to me and go you've been doing this for how long and i'm like they're doing this since 2012 and they're like what like i don't know anyone else who's been doing it that long i was like okay and yeah. then you know because you just think you're doing what you're doing you don't realize you're one of the pioneers of something really mm. and uh yeah it's just that whole journey that whole getting arrested led to that and then that journey has led to loads of connections and people that I've worked with all over the world mm. um yeah it's just well, just it's incredible amazing the, your your spiritual awakening I think did it did you mention that it started in 2012 because I might have read 20, some 2011 2011 well, I got arrested in 2011 at the beginning of 2011 yeah yeah, so you had like, uh, but then that led on to 2012, which is which is great because the mind calendar, they were supposed to. Do you remember the time for? Oh, the world's gonna end 2012, and everybody was going crazy yeah. about it. And uh, but it was actually not the physical world, except this was the consciousness shifting the consciousness, the paradigm. You know, the yeah. the old had to do. That's where the turning point, the shift had to happen. And yeah. I guess like well, around that I mean, time, yeah, you yeah. you went through your awakening as well, so. Yeah, which was, which was magical because you start tapping into those energies at that at that time, and then you realize you know, I know I end up meeting people who are ten years older than me that woke up in twenty eighteen or twenty twenty, and mm -hmm. you know lots of people have woke up since twenty nineteen more mm -hmm. than ever before on the whole planet. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the the, the twenty twenty thing and the Mayan thing and the world ending it was such uh, it was so hilarious because it's basically a five thousand six hundred year calendar. Yeah, um, that ended on that date. Yeah. But what happens on a calendar? It's like it's like on the thirty first. Is it the, how many days in January? 30, 31? Thirty one. Thirty something. Yeah, I think thirty one. Yeah. So it's like it's like uh, Eastern people. Every time our calendar ends, they're going. Those idiots think the world's going to end. <laughs> what idiots? Every year they think it's going to end every year. It's like calendar it starts again. It's like yeah. it goes again. Do you know what I mean? A new and cycle. Like, a new cycle. That's what the Mayans say. It's like yeah. yeah, it's a new age, a new cycle. But there was loads of things that were pivotal at that point. Mm. That's the cosmic moment. And I talk a lot about the cosmic moment. The 21st of December, 2012, was mm. the cosmic moment. And even now I go to I come, I go to events and I'm like, does everyone know what the cosmic moment is? 2012. <laughs> yeah. And some people are like, no. And I'm like, you're wearing that hippie outfit and you don't know about the cosmic moment. I was like, you need to wear some duller clothes or do some reading because you can't look like that and not know what the cosmic moment is. Because you're looking at me in my normal attire now, just in a T-shirt, and you go, he doesn't know about the cosmic moment. He doesn't know very much. I take my crystal away. He doesn't know very much. You know what I mean? It's like, you're wearing all that shit. Back it up. It's like someone, it's like someone wearing a Che Guevara T-shirt and they know nothing about communism or revolution. Do you know what I mean? You're like, can't wear that T-shirt, bro. Yeah, Got to take no, the T-shirt off. Yeah, man. I love it. I love it, man. I love you. Like Paulina's daughter got a Nirvana t shirt. I went, Do you know who they are? She's like, No, I like the colors. I was like, You can't wear that. 
I'm not wearing it. <laughs> go and listen to the albums first. <laughs> oh my god, I love it, man! It's so you're so funny. You crack me up. <laughs> I think if you you should like have to have like a ID or something to be able to you know. Yeah, if someone's selling, like your someone's name selling you, tag, someone's man. selling you a harem pants. You should be like a questionnaire. Like, do you know when the cosmic <laughs> moment is? Have you heard of uh, Osho? Do you know what the Christ conscious energy is? Have you heard of Paramahansa Yogananda? Uh, <laughs> What explain to me what yoga means? <laughs> if I was selling harem pants, I would make sure. Oh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so crazy. I was like, I was, I was gonna go into like, I was, it's so weird because I went to a psychic and um, my had, I had my awakening in 2016 and, and um, she goes like, there was something supposed to happen about four years ago that didn't happen, and I was like thinking back. Four years ago, it was 2012. I was going absolutely bonkers at the fact the world's ending. And I'm like, my <laughs> guides actually thought that she's going to have a me- me- mental breakdown. She can't handle this awakening energy. Let's delay it for another four years. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's hilarious. It's like, okay, great. I was able to be nuts in like, in like, you know, couldn't handle that energy. Um, but yeah, no, it's great. It's great. <laughs> and sometimes things get, do get delayed. And I'm glad it's happened now. Um, um, so Can I just tell you one thing about a psychic? Yeah, go on. When I did the first draft of my book, mm. I give it, I give it one, I give a chapter to my mate for my mm. mate to read. And then he come back to me. He was like, uh, he went, who is this physic? I was like, what do you mean? He was like, oh, this mathematician you keep talking about, I'm a mathematician <laughs> all the way through the book. I was like, what did you show me? Show me. And, I, and he was like, there. I was like, psychic. He went, you've spelled it physic. Yeah. I spelled it physic all the way through these chapters. No. <laughs> so he's thinking, who's this mathematician? Like, he keeps going to. <laughs> so I, 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 it, it has been changed in the book. <laughs> oh my god that's hilarious it'd be like a oh, science and spiritual he's talking about spiritual stuff and he's going to the scientist what the hell <laughs> yeah hilarious i <laughs> oh, love it man that's that's jokes that's jokes um so um it's, it put me off like it was like where's my questions um <clears throat> so i mean like you know what would you like you know youngsters who are going through wh- where you were right now and they're struggling they tapped into this podcast right and they yeah. they they're struggling with with drinking they're uh, struggling with drugs and have domestic violence going on what would you kind of just say to them you know what would their first step be and just to say to them that the power is within them that they are powerful beyond measure but mm-hmm. also i'd say to them Go and do it properly. Whatever you're doing, go and do it properly so you really don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, suffer it's enough not... until you don't want to suffer anymore like as friends well. Friends of mine who are like <laughs> scared about the kids doing this and that and everything. It's like, well, what did we do? Mm. Let them do it and then you figure it out eventually. But it's it's that not teetering and not being supported too much because if you need to hit rock bottom, hit it hard. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But don't just love, have yourself just hovering above rock bottom for a while. You know, make sure something happens that makes you really want to better yourself and go, this isn't working out for me. If there was youngsters who wanted to chat and they were like, right, I'm ready. It's like, right, mm. start mm. practicing yoga. Mm. Start doing breath work. Start listening to talks. Start reading the correct books. Mm. Do you know what I mean? There's all the resources that you need to be a better version of yourself are out there. Mm. Actually, if you was really good, you don't need any of them because they're all already inside you. Yeah. But Beautiful. what what these books do mm. and can do and what certain teachers can do is unlock that for you mm. to show you yourself. Yeah. You know, if anybody if any spiritual teachers wanting you to be like them, mm. like they're not a good teacher. Mm. You need someone who wants you to be who you're you're supposed to be as an as an individual. And um you know, that's my big focus is especially with the facilitator training because that was like I felt like I stepped up a level and it mm. wasn't something that I wanted to do it was something that was almost forced upon me by mm. the universe <laughs> and in our trainings it's like I do not want you to do a Liam Brown cacao ceremony mm. I want you to do whatever cacao ceremony is in you with your unique gifts and talents and mm. everybody has got their own unique gifts and talents mm. and it's about bringing them out you know and it's about following 
following the heart, really. And if you're around yeah. domestic violence, like, get out of there for a start. Mm. Um, don't feel like a duty to be around um, toxic people because they're family members. You don't oh, have to be. That's a big one. That's a yeah. big one. Massive. It's like, let go, let, let go, you know? Mm. And it, and if you're hanging on there because of your family, well, that's your problem. Mm. Your, your, that, your lesson then is to let go. Mm. Can you let go? Mm. Because part of you is going, well, I still want this drama. I still want this suffering. Mm. And if it else. didn't, it's like, yeah. boom, gone. Yeah. yeah? It's like, yeah. cut things out of your environment that you don't want. Mm. Yeah? Mm. And, it, and, it, and sometimes you have to be super brutal. Oh, yeah. 100%. 2019 and I let go of a lot of, a hell of a lot of people. Oh yeah, same. And and some really positive people as well, but it just the energy wasn't wasn't right. specifically right. You know, mm. not positive in terms of they were doing good work, they were on this path and it was like I just had to break free of things and mm. since I broke free of things, my wings have opened, I've spread and I've become yeah. the person that I'm supposed to be yeah. becoming. And yeah, that's I'd... and that's that's there for everybody. Yeah, and I think it's like once you get and really hone in that everybody who you come across is only there for a certain period of time, you know, and they pass by. And rather than holding on to them, oh my god, it's been it's been we've been together for fifteen years, or we've been uh, friends for twenty years, or something. I want to hold on, but actually, if you let go, you're actually like you know you're letting go like your wings that you new opportunity, new uh, experiences that's coming into your life. It's like you kind of just detach from that attachment to them, you know, um, mm. and then you see them as a gift. They were a gift in your life a certain time. They came and they showed you something that you didn't see in yourself. And you they, you showed them what they didn't see, whether they see it there, mm. there, there and then or not, or they may see it 10 years later. At least you pl planted something in them, you know. Yeah. Um, now, you were mentioned about books. Let's talk about your book. Uh, dealer to healer so how did that come about so I basically just started when I went to Guatemala for the end of the Mayan calendar mm -hmm. um, people were like oh you should like do a blog so I just started writing this blog um, and then of all the different experiences that I had and some of them were super trippy super like mental mm -hmm. Um and actually, the, when I was doing the blog, the most read one was one that I called I Joined a Cult, which was nothing about I Joined a Cult. Yeah. But it was just like I knew what was on people's minds about what I was doing. Oh. You know, the people that I knew from my party days in London, my friends that I'd grew up with, my family. Mm. And it was like, oh, that's interesting, isn't it? It's like you write a chapter called I Joined a Cult and mm. everyone wants to read it. Um, so it was just like that was I was just writing all the time. I was writing a lot of poetry. I was writing a lot of music. It was just coming out of me. I don't know where it had come from. I got a D in English. Do you know what I mean? It was like, mm. it was not that that was ever part of me before then. It was and, your awakening, um, man. It's all of a sudden all these channels started up, or it starts opening up inside of you. Yeah, it's yeah. Like... Just bump, bump, bump. It was, uh, yeah. it, it was I almost short circuited a couple of times. Mm. Um, but when I got back from the travels, I was just, you know, wherever I went, I was telling people stories. And then a few people were like, you need to write a book. You need mm. to write a book. And um, and then I remember I was in the hospital for something. And I, op I just was like, right, universe, what do you want me to do? And I opened this magazine just randomly. Mm. And it was this three pages about how to write a book and how to get it done. And I was like, oh, oh right, Perfect. man. Like, the universe is... <laughs> wanted me to write a book I was like right I've got to write a book Jesus Christ I'm writing a book okay <laughs> so so I started to write a book and then I decided to like within that journey of being in Guatemala for the end of the mind calendar to sort of weave within that why I was there what had happened to lead me there so mm -hmm. it's kind of interspersed with life events like uh living in a battered wives institute lager mm -hmm. sex mm -hmm. drinking football growing up racism the things that are you know that I was around funny stories like my, then leading into the awakening before I went to Guatemala so it's kind of like um I feel like it's I always say it's a mixture of a uh, James Frey's a million little pieces and um this guy called oh what's his name now something D. Yalm Erwin D. Yalm uh, he's got a book called The Schopenhauer Cure which is about philosophy and has like two different stories running through it 
Mm. Um, and I kind of liked that idea. So I kind of like used that uh, mm. within what I was doing. And then just as much as possible, just try to write as you would tell someone a story when you was in front of them. Mm. Mm. Like you're having a conversation as well, then you can edit after and make it into... Yeah, and oh, I think yeah, that's, that's what people way. like the most most about my book is that mm. they feel like I'm talking to them and I'm mm. taking them to places ah, and they can yeah. experience where I am and feel it and feel the texture, the mm. energy, the moisture, the you know the heat, whatever it is. Yeah. That's what people say. And the thing is with the book, I released it in 2019 after a big period of procrastination and thinking, who am I to, you know, I'm dyslexic. Mm. I've got a D in English and I'm nervous of people reading it and mm. having an opinion. But then I knew on a in, a, in like a divine way and through messages that I'd got from God was just like, release the book, everything mm. will fall into place. Yeah. Mm. And I've mm. had this with a few instances in my life and it, it always has been. Yeah. And it's like, what took you so long? It just been sat on my laptop. And then eventually I was like, right, I've got to release this. I'm going to self-publish put all the energy into it, committed to three months of getting it all done, everything, the cover. People think you just write a book and that's it. You've got to get the cover, you've got to get it edited, you've got to get it proofread, you've got to get it um, formatted. There's so many things that go into it that you would never even imagine. And I just wanted someone to do that. I wanted a publisher, but God, thanking God that I didn't get one mm. and lose all the rights to something that's my piece of work. Yeah. Um, and I released it in 2019. Um, and it's just growing all the time. Mm. Like people just want my book now yeah. and the sales increase every month, you know, Amazing. and it's like to not be, it's like we want that instant success, that instant gratification. It's like, it's like... let things just put things out there in the ether mm. and they'll do what they need to do. Mm. And I will 100% sell a million copies of my book. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you. Yeah. Yeah. And that art of surrender as well. It's uh, it started off your spiritual awakening. Just surrender, just surrender, and let universe yeah. just do the work for you in terms of in the background. And it takes like sometimes it takes years for it to be a hit. You know, like you exactly said, it can't yeah. be con in instant. It's so funny because at the moment I am writing a book. Writing a book is 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 going around my head at the moment as well. And um and uh, I went through like quite a lot of uh um like two years, three years ago, um I started writing something. Nothing like it's like, you know, nothing like I'm gonna write a book or something. But so I started writing and wrote about 10 pages of it. And um and I of course landed on my on my lap is like how to write a book but in Hay House, you know, the uh the company Hay House yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I was I was going through that, going through that, but then somehow it got delayed. But it's coming back around again. It's like I'm getting really nudged, and there's people who are coming up to me and say, "Oh, you need to write a book. Oh, you need to do this." And and this book thing yeah. is like all over the place, all over the show. So you're right. There's like there's timing to everything, you know. Uh, when you are ready, um, universe just just keep nudges you. It's like now's the time. Do this now. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. We'll, see. That's, we'll see. That's the thing is, it's overwhelming when you go, I've got to write a book. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, where do I start? What do I do? Yeah, it's like, oh. Time. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. That, that's where, that's every book you've ever read. That's how they started. Mm. One page. Do you know mm. what I mean? One paragraph. Yeah. One sentence. Yeah. One word. Yeah. And then just add them up. And then eventually you got a book. But it's yeah. like, it's overwhelming when you go, Oh, I've got to write something that it's like just commit to something. You what you've got to do though is you've got to be fully focused. Mm. It's like phone off, no distractions, no notifications on your laptop, no WhatsApp on your laptop, no emails on your laptop. I'm just here and I'm gonna write. And mm. actually, if I want to use the internet, I'm gonna go have to, you know, if there's a little bit of research, it's like, oh, I need to research this or quote this here. It's in the other room. Yeah. Yeah, because, and go over there, pick it up. Because of our attention, yeah. the way our attention span is at the moment, oh, I'm always set yourself up to win, not yeah. to fail. Mm. And there's little things that you can do to set yourself up to win. And it's like, right, four hours a day. I was doing 10 hours a day. I was like, right, today's just writing. Mm. And I'd just be writing and I'd have my lunch and right, 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 bum, 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 bum. Mm. And it's, but it's a massive, it's a massive process. Mm. And it's just to 
you know, research things on the internet. How mm. did people write a book? How did they publish it? What do you want to do? It's all there, mm. but it's, mm. you know, I know I can't write another book at the moment, mm. but I know that I will write another book. Mm. But mm. now is not the time. Mm. Mm. And you will know when, when it's the right time. It's like yeah. universe just will just indicate to you, that's it. Go on. Yeah. So if <laughs> yeah. it's telling you you need to write one, you get off your ass and write one. Yeah, well, it's definitely. <laughs> I'll be doing that. Like <laughs> switching off, like, Liam not talking to you for, like, for a few years. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about uh, cacao ceremonies, you know, uh, for some of our listeners who might not know what it is and what, what's, what happens in cacao c- ceremonies. So in a... In a quintessential cacao ceremony, you'll sit down with some ladies, you'll drink cacao, and you'll say nice <laughs> things to each other. And you'll leave and go, well, that was nice, but... Yeah. <laughs> and you'll probably be wearing, like, beige colours and really soft furnishings. Yeah, and, and you'll like have, that. like, you'll, you'll, your heart just start opening up yeah. around the ladies yeah. as well. And people right? will talk slowly, <laughs> oh, my God. You know. <laughs> um, so that's... Uh, that, that's what a normal cacao ceremony seems to be um, yeah. but my cacao ceremonies um, Keith's cacao ceremony so Keith's the cacao shaman who I mm. learn everything from mm. um, and I will always go back to him there's been other teachers on on the path Ahisha Das has taught me mm. a lot of medicine songs so for my cacao ceremonies and the way I do it is um, it's kind of fusing a lot of like divine yogic teachings with shamanic spirit plant medicines and kind mm-hmm. of infusing infusing the two so like you know my typical cacao ceremony would last five hours mm. people are like what five hours and it's like it goes really quick because cacao's switching off the mind and connecting to you the heart mm-hmm. the mind is a time is a construct of the mind it's mm-hmm. like when we watch you know i always give the analogy if you watch half a game of football and it's a really bad game it feels like it's gone on forever mm-hmm. when you watch half a game of football and it's amazing and you're like oh my like that feels like it was 10 minutes because yeah. my the mind is doing its thing and time is this construct so people who come to cacao ceremonies you switch off the mind because we're oxygenating it by the chemicals that are being given to you when you drink a ceremonial dose mm. so like physiologically it's oxygenating your mind which is freeing it up which allows you to drop into the heart which has always also been giving a workout and opening the capillaries in the artery so you're more aware of the heart space mm-hmm. um so you're getting out of that time construct so people who come to a ceremony leave after five hours are like that was five hours that was mm-hmm. amazing or they've been meditating for like two hours of it or something but i you know i weave in a lot of indian mantra my commitment is to get people to leave there to feel inspired, motivated to be a better version of themselves. Mm. To make to, the way that I talk, the way that I present the ceremonies, it's almost like a stand-up comedy show at the beginning, <laughs> but <laughs> with deep spiritual teachings within yeah. it. You know, and it's like getting everybody accountable for their own life. You know, mm. it's no one else's fault. It's your fault. Yeah. Mm. If you're in a shitty relationship, you chose it. Yeah. If you're <laughs> yeah. in a shitty relationship, the Take signs ownership. were there. Take on the it. signs were there right at the beginning, but you didn't listen to him. You didn't say the advice. You know, the universe would have told you all the way through. Every, anyone who's ever been in a shit, there was no signs. Yes, there was. Yeah, yeah. there was the signs all the way through. <laughs> you look back. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, there was that happened. <laughs> but I wanted to ignore that, and I thought that was just a one-off. Yeah, love it, love it. And it's like it's all there. So it's like getting people accountable. You know, people walk out of my cacao ceremonies a lot because <laughs> they're not ready. Yeah, they're not ready to take responsibility. Yeah. 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 And those um, who stick, they go through a beautiful journey with it, you know. And though yeah. they really struggle and have hung on, hung on and wanted to leave and stayed, they're like, oh God, some I feel you know, when I get everyone dancing at their end, they're like, I feel amazing. I'm so glad that I stayed. I understand what you were saying at the beginning now and why you said it. And I really wish that lady who was just over there had held on because she'd yeah. be feeling amazing now. It's yeah. like it's not her time, man. Oh, and I'm not that's here to amazing. please I'm not here to please everybody. Yeah, no, but and I actually, love. Yeah, go on. I brought yeah. my record on the tour. On the tour in March, we had four people walked out, and I was like, "Yes, <laughs> <laughs> how many can we get next year?" <laughs> no, bless them though. It's like you're, because you're, I know yeah. if they would have stayed, what they would have got. So mm. they're 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 hurting themselves, you know. Yeah. 
And, you know, like when I went to, that was my first experience as well at your cacao ceremony came, came with uh, Pauline and um, uh, who else did I, Haley? I can't remember who, who was there. Did you come to my tent? One. No, I haven't. I you came think, to okay. the one in Stockport. Ah, oh, okay. The yeah, one yeah, in yeah, Stockport, yeah. 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 Um, I came to that one. That was my first experience, uh, obviously, uh, drinking cacao. And it almost, you know, while you were talking, there was a part of me is like, I could have been that person. Just, I'm going to walk out. I'm, I'm too scared. It's that fear. It's that fear. And yeah, I yeah. knew that it was my fear. I'm going to give it a go because I'm a trier. I give it a go anyway. And if, if I don't like it, I don't like it, you know. And if I it, it doesn't resonate, it doesn't resonate. But yeah, I could kind of resonate it's like it's fear of oh what if um what if I'm faced with my fear or what if I am um, um physically sick what if there's a lot of fear base and you know you, you're right you know you have to say these things straight up look you may be faced with your fears you may have to take accountable actions for it's a responsibility for your actions and not a lot of yeah. people are in that space because people do come and try new things like a cow or a dances. Well, so I'm going to try something new, but they don't know what they, they, they're getting themselves into, whether they're ready for it or, or not, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, you know, that's what I say. Uh, when I was teaching yo like physical yoga a lot, mm. when someone new would come and be like, uh, are you sure you want to do this? Mm. And they're like, what do you mean? And just mm. coming to a yoga class, I was like, well, it's a bit more than that. Yeah. This could totally destroy your life as it is right now. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? They're just coming to a class, do you know what I mean? <laughs> just coming to a yoga class. And uh, I'm like, you know, if you get into this, this could really destroy your life. How it, what do you mean? Well, you'll, 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 you'll probably lose all your friends. You'll start wearing <laughs> different things. Your tastes will change. You won't want to drink as much. You won't want, you know, it's all, it's going to totally destroy your life as you know it. Yeah. But, yeah. The life that will be presented to you afterwards will be at least a hundred times better than the one you've got now. So oh, the choice yeah. is yours. Just take a mat and sit over there. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just go back to the mat. They're like, "What is going on?" <laughs> it's taking that leap of faith, man. Yeah, it's, it's it, if you've been called, you've been called. Um, love it. Uh, so let's talk about yoga rave. You're just talking about yoga, right? Let's talk about yoga rave. What is it like? You have a DJ. Everybody's doing yoga and raving. Please explain. Yeah. Well, that was kind of what that was like. The start of Stone Cold Sober was the yoga rave, and we were going to go on tour with it. And I actually don't, I don't do the yoga rave anymore. Oh, do you not? Um, no, I just do it at the festival. Yeah. At, so, what what does it involve then? What do you do? In so, it? we do like I've got a live DJ with me. We mm -hmm. play a lot of banging techno, drum and bass, house music, dance music. Mm. Like some classic kind of like anth uh, dance anthems. Um, we have a chakra dance at the beginning where clear everyone up. We sing a lot of chant mantra. Um, a lot of it's about gati gati paragati parasan gati bodhisvaha, which is all about uh -huh. letting go, let go, let go, let go. Please let go. Let go of the things that are holding you back. Um, let go of anything that's, you know, not in alignment with the better version of yourself. And then just through the yoga, through the practice, we start with banging, banging tunes, really mm. dynamic yoga flow, dance sections within the yoga flow. When you're in a, you know, when you're in like Trikonasana, you just have to be bouncing to the beat. It's about moving your body to the beat of the music as well. Um, and that was kind of the start of really finding my feet as a, almost like a, like an entertainer slash frontman slash spiritual leader slash teacher mm. in that and then it was part of the melding process of what i do now um mm. but yeah i don't i don't teach much physical yoga anymore because mm. it just cacao's took over and i feel as a as a yoga teacher which a yoga teacher should be a yoga teacher the definition of a yoga teacher is someone that propels other people towards self-realization and enlightenment Mm. yeah mm. um and the biggest tool that i have within my box as a yoga teacher is a cacao ceremony yeah yeah because that yeah will... and a lot of people yeah. don't associate the two mm. but you know people associate yoga with stretching it's a percentage of yoga is the stretching yeah mm. 
um, it motivation. can lead you to awakenings. It can lead you to changes. But mm. a yogi can be somebody without arms and legs. Mm. They can be the most self-realized person within that space. Mm. So it's about getting rid of this Western perception of yoga as a physical practice as mm. we do yoga. Mm. Yeah. Yoga is a, a scientifically proven path to self-realization and enlightenment. And the physical practice is one tiny element within that, which is asana. And all the practices, all the postures, all the physical moves are only to lead you to one physical move, which is to sit in meditation, receive mm. divine guidance yeah. and shut off your mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's what it beautiful. is. So yoga oh. rave is fucking bang he's banging. Yeah. Totally banging. And you leave there just feeling like a breath of fresh air has been flown flown through you. But then a rocket has also been injected up into your rear passage <laughs> and you're ready to go out in the world and do the things that you need to do. Get rid of the things that aren't serving you. Like, not next week. Like, make the call Yeah. on the way home. Do you know what do I mean? It. It's like, let's do it. Do it. I love it, man. I love it. Oh my God, I don't want this interview to end. But we're like, we're going over an hour an hour. So, um. Yeah. Oh my God. Like there's so many more. We could just sit here and chat for hours and hours and hours. I've actually got rapid fire questions for you, but before then, um, how would you sum up your amazing life so far in three words? Chaotic, funny, mm -hmm. divine. Oh, beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All in one. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right, let's get into this uh, rapid fire questions. Oh, you ready? Right. Okay. Hit me. Yeah. What is your definition of universe God life? Um, is love, love a creative, a creative energy, which is which is love, which wants the best for all humans. Yeah. Beautiful. Love it. What do you think happens when you die? Uh, that you don't die. You wake up. You don't up. die. As you Alan Watts says, you wake up. Yeah, you just like, <laughs> I, I sometimes think you're in like, a, you're in an ayahuasca ceremony on another planet and you just wake up and we're like, that was intense. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, how do you define religion and spirituality? Individually or? How do you define think... religion? Yeah, individually if you want think spirituality is something that's open to everybody that is within each and every person that isn't dogmatic that isn't uh, to do with caste creed color anything whereas uh, religion is usually a dogmatic way of controlling a uh, said set of people to certain values mm, awesome what's the lesson that took you the longest to learn um <laughs> <laughs> There's lots that I still haven't learned. <laughs> Everybody says that, so I still not learned. I think I think the lesson that changed my life the most was realizing that nobody had ever made me angry in my life. That I'd always chosen to be angry by that situation. Mm, mm. That was the most. That took me a long time to learn, like thirty, thirty-one. Mm. Um, but it's what changed me the most from that point. It was pivotal. Mm. Wow, you just said that in a like because I'm going through a bit of a last few days. It's like anger emotion coming up and over a certain situation, so I'm dealing with a lot of anger. So it's like, wow, okay, like look into yourself, Mad. <laughs> look into yeah, yourself. Yeah, it's yours. It's yours. Yeah, it's my, it's nobody yeah. else is making it. It's your. Yeah. It's your anger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Taking accountable action, <laughs> accountability, responsibility. Totally. Um, so do you believe that people with horrible beginnings end up creating the best futures? Yes. Boom. That's what we want. Yeah, it's like yeah. the worse you've had it, the better you can make it. Ah, oh, love it. Yes. Oh, my God, this is so good. I am fully in present moment when? Fully in present moment when? Probably when I'm singing Kirtan, when mm. I'm singing Mantra on my harmonium. Mm. Beautiful. Do you believe there is an end to healing? No. No. It just carries on no. in different lifetimes as well. <laughs> then why uh, are we taking, why is everybody so rushy? So it's like, oh, I would heal this part, this lifetime. No, <laughs> it's going to continue. 
yeah, it's like just just do what you've got to do. But does it ever does it ever end? I think I, I think I've kind of probably got a bit confused then with like do, does the growth can you ever grow? But I think every when you're growing, you're healing as well. Mm. But mm. the continual growth can never stop. Yeah. Like there's no limit to abundance. There's no limit to happiness. That you know, it's just like boom. Let's let's get to that full bliss. And under is just total total bliss. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> that's interesting. Well, then I probably can go a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit. A bit you know more. I mean? like, yeah. Wah. Keep an ever expanding universe as well. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, uh, the world needs more of what? Like, the world needs more of what? Um. Self self-regulated people for people just oh, yes. the, people to know they've not got a must must oh what's the word self-mastery to, to be your own master to mm. realize you don't have any masters to mm. be free to be sovereign to mm. be sovereign yeah needs more sovereignty uh sovereign beings yes yeah. yes each individual yes what impacts each person sovereign oh beautiful i love it i love it i love it so one last question, what is that one message that you would share to someone who's going through spiritual awakening, dark night of the soul or adversity, and they can't see the light at the end of, end of the tunnel? What would you say to them right now? Read me book. <laughs> yeah, read his book. Read me book and look Dila where I am now. <laughs> and while, you, while you're going through that, hold on very tight because... Yes. You it's know, a bumpy ride. ride. <laughs> yeah, love it. And I had one of my friends was is, is going through it at the a, a lot a lot that I know is going through it, and I'm like, I've, you know, I've been there. I said, you just got to, it's horrible. You just yeah. got to hold on. Yeah, ride it out and mm. keep keep turning up, keep showing up at events, keep practicing yoga, keep being around the right people that make you feel good, that inspire you. Yeah, man, hold on, baby. Yeah. Yes, yes, love it. How can people contact you, Liam? Where are you? You can't phone me because that'd be really annoying. <laughs> I'm a bit like stalking you. <laughs> um, the website is the fullpowercacao.com, stonecoldsobrevents.com, socials at fullpowercacao, um, at stonecold underscore sober, I think it is, <laughs> or the underscore Don't might be somewhere you. else. Um, yeah, Instagram. Facebook, uh, yeah, yeah, sweet. Email team at full power cacao so I don't directly get your message. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy and people send me bullshit <laughs> questions sometimes. I'm like, you're really asking me that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i love it man i love it oh this is so good i don't want this like interview to end but yeah oh uh, thank you william for coming on this podcast man it's been absolute pleasure interviewing you and like you know uh, going through your journey it's just been incredible i'm sure many of our listeners be cracking and like getting some insights and getting some wisdom right now but yes thank you Oh, well, thank you for being an amazing presenter and thank you for bringing your podcast back because I think everybody needs to listen to him and you're doing an epic job. Really yeah, appreciate man. it. Thank you, man. Full power. Full power. Thank you for listening to this episode. I would absolutely love to know what your biggest takeaway from this conversation has been. You can share your thoughts on my Facebook or Instagram, Madia Sosen. If you would like to listen to this episode, I am on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many, many more. Just search Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan. If you enjoyed this episode, then please do rate and share this with your family and friends as that will help me out a lot. Thank you so much once again, and I will see you in the next episode.